This is KXP with the Music Matters, 90.3 FM in Seattle, all around the world, on the web at kxp.org. I'm really happy to have Hayes Carl in the studio. It's no eternal mystery, don't need a hard and clue. Why some men do their damnedest when a half a damn would do? There's a lifetime in the distance and it's filled with love and gold. And I'll find it yet if I may be so bold. Yeah, some men do the conqueror and some men do the wheel. And some will do most anything to hide the way they feel. And some like giving orders and some like to be told. But I'll make my way if I may be so bold. Bold enough to make a difference, bold enough to say I care. Bold enough to keep on trying, even when the will's not there. There's a whole world out there waiting full of stories to be told. And I heed the call and I tell them all if I may be so bold. Boys are emptying their glasses as a true believer's will With what I guess these days passes for a good time or thrill And they're trying hard to convince you but I don't believe your soul So I step right up if I may be so bold Bold enough to make a difference, bold enough to say I can Bold enough to keep on trying even when the game's not fair there's a whole world out there waiting full of dreams that can't be sold And I heed the call and live them all if I may be so bold Towns and swallowed up the sea. I wrestled with the question of just who I aim to be. Been death's hands, I had to laugh at some hands I've loved before. But I play them all if I make me so bold. Bold enough to not surrender, bold enough to give a damn, bold enough to keep on moving or to stay right where I am. Stories to be told, and I heed the call and tell them all about me. Be so bold, yeah, tell them all about me. If you would do a better job of listening Then maybe you would understand Why I'm at the door You just had to paint the front porch ceiling turquoise You said that's the way we do it in the South You claim it keeps out all the evil spirits Sometimes I can't believe the words coming out your mouth but I try because I want to I know your heart the best way that I can through the laughter and the pain and the sometimes just insane girl all I want to do is be your man sometimes Pretend like we're strangers I've been meeting up for the first time I'll be a doctor or a secret agent Just hoping that she'd laugh with me As I 
Caro in the Roadhouse, the song Nanya from the new album, brand new record called What It Is on Dual Tone Records. And before that was If I May Be So Bold. Hayes Caro, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Good to have you here. You're in Seattle for two sold out nights at the tractor. Yes. Yeah. And today you had one of those kind of rare half days off. <laughs> yeah. what, what did you do? Well, uh, uh, I got uh, eight hours sleep for the first time in a minute and nice. that was nice. And then... Uh, I uh, went and did a little bit of, uh, we're doing uh, some photo shoots and some some tapings of other stuff. So it wasn't really a, a half day off, but, I, see. but uh, yeah. I, I was at least getting to stay in one place, which yeah. was nice. Being on tour is tough. You, it's a lot of work, getting to and fro and, and doing stuff like that. Yeah, well, you know, the old saying, the, the uh, play for free and the get paid for the travel and all that stuff. And, and, and it's true, it's the, the, the playing music's the easy part and the fun part and why you get into this, the... The, the traveling and the being away from home is the is not not quite as much fun. Yeah, but, uh, but it's great to be here in Seattle for two days. That last song, Nanya, None Your Business, is inspired and, and written for your partner Allison Moore. Yeah, yeah, and partially uh, co-written um, mm-hmm. uh, with her. She and co-wrote she sings a lot on of songs, too, but she sings on it yeah. and co-produced the record, so yeah. she's all over the place on this one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she wanted to paint the front porch ceiling turquoise? She did actually paint it uh, turquoise uh, or, or uh, uh, hate blue, hot blue. I, I don't know how you pronounce it exactly. I think yeah. it is, I had a lot of fans uh, come out and correct me that it's not actually <laughs> turquoise. is not the, the specific color. Uh, kind of like the color of these lights maybe. Yeah. And what was her reasoning behind the, the, uh, the paint color? Well, her reasoning was uh, when she grew up, she she heard that that it keeps out evil spirits. You paint the front porch uh, ceiling and the back porch ceiling, um, and it gives them a pathway to get through in in and out of the house. <clears throat> if you don't paint the back porch, then they can't get out of the house. And and uh, uh, but a lot of people, I mean, these these sort of uh, uh, myths or traditions uh, are, are based in some sort of practicality generally. And in this one. Um, uh, I, I've heard that it, mosquitoes and mud daubers and different things it keeps them away because it, I think it makes them feel like it's the sky, and uh, so they don't they're not building uh, like daubers are not building right. nests up there and stuff. Yeah. So and she's a southern girl, and she, that title Nanya is a southern thing. Right? She's extremely southern. Yeah, she's from South Alabama, and uh, uh, yeah, so she's got her own. Uh, she's one of the most articulate and erudite people I know, but uh, uh, she has her own language sometimes uh, that, that comes from her childhood and from growing up in the South. So, yeah. none you tend you, mind you, is something she says, none of your business, tend your business, mind your business. And uh, so I heard that in passing one time, and I thought uh, that, that was uh, pretty fertile ground for a song. And you're a Texan, and I think more specifically, you're a Gulf Coast guy, is that right? Or where did you <clears throat> grow up, near Houston? Yeah, I grew up uh, just north of Houston, and 
uh, I, I went and lived in Arkansas for a while. I went to school in Arkansas. Um, and then came back down to, to Texas, and I moved out to the beach, a um, little beach town called Crystal Beach, Texas. And it's on a, a, a peninsula just outside of Galveston Island. And mm-hmm. that's where I started playing music for the first time. And, and uh, they had a lot of bars out there. And I just had this dream of being a songwriter and, and uh, uh, moved to a place where I was the only guy who could play guitar and sing at the same time, which gave me a, a good heads up on uh, or a good a good place to start and so i just got a tip jar and went and asked the bars if i could set up in the corner and start playing and that's that's where it all began yeah and now 20 years later here you are here we are yeah well it's been pretty uh, a great career i'm a big fan and uh it's great to have you on the show the first song was uh, if i may be so bold Mm -hmm. and uh that seems to be the uh the song of the album in my mind and it it really sort of comes from a place that i want to ask you about you you wrote uh, a piece for no depression magazine recently that would, that's called if i may be so bold and i think if i got it right it's it's, it's pretty much about uh sort of a, a new agreement or a new deal with your with your fan base well with my fan base and with myself um uh i i realized uh, at a certain point that that um, that I was not making myself as clear as I felt like I needed to be about certain things, and and <clears throat> that doesn't mean I aim to be a political songwriter. I need to push my opinions on on other people. I, I, one of my favorite quotes is from Todd Snyder. He says, "I I don't write these songs to change anybody's mind. I write them to ease my own." And and um, uh, and, and on this record, I was doing a lot more of that. A lot more of, of trying to write songs for myself, and uh, uh, and this one was a call to arms to to uh, uh, to not sit on the sidelines for the second half of my life. You know, I look back and, and I, I realize that uh, you know I let fear of uh, people's opinions or of uh, uh, my own inadequacies or uh, fear of failure kind of keep me from from being living at my fullest and uh i regret that and i didn't want to make that same mistake for the next hopefully however many years i got yeah. left and and uh, uh so this is something that i that i wrote uh, to remind myself of that every night and and uh and so you know it applies to to all parts of life what i do creatively what i do personally what i do publicly and uh um i, I just I didn't want to live in fear of people's reactions uh, for me as an artist and as a person in the citizen to uh, um, speak out about what I felt was important to me. Yeah. In my reading of it, it had a lot to do with persona as well in terms of what does an artist want to put out there and not put out there in terms of their personal or, or private life oh. versus their stage life. I mean, how much do you want to protect yourself from people by putting it all out there or not putting it out there? Yeah, and that's always been tricky for me. I, I uh, you know, finding it, figuring out where that line was between what I was creating and 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 what I put, uh, you know, how how much of it was was reflective of my life and how much of it was just creativity and imagination and had nothing to do with me. And depending on where I was in my life and my career, I've been on either side of that line. Stuff has been uh, uh, there's been stuff that was deeply personal and 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 autobiographical and then there's been stuff that was you know just uh, my imagination at work and um uh yeah just just uh, uh trying to to think about what i put out for people or what people's perception of it is tricky uh for me it's it's uh i'm not sure i have the bandwidth to to uh figure out anything other than just this is where i'm this is where i'm at and this is what i'm creating and and put it out there in the world and like we talked about earlier, that's the easy part. The, the hard part sometimes is explaining it or trying to figure out, um, uh, you know, how how uh, what it is you want people to um, perceive you as, and and how you want them to take you. I don't like thinking about that. It, it's it's weird because I I think I can get too much into that. And yeah, it's much easier for me to just say. Here's what it is. Have fun with it. If it means something to you, roll with it. Here's what it means to me. Yeah, and, and that's the name of the album, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a fan of Randy Newman? Because he also writes in the third person a lot and has, creates characters. And I am. I am. Yeah. yeah. He was a big influence for sure. Yeah. 
songs like She Left Me For Jesus or Another Like You are sort of like those kind of songs. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's great to personify something else, somebody else, and, and uh, or use another character. Uh, uh, I like getting into people's heads and, and seeing, you know, the other side of things. And, and, and sometimes that's the way I like to write. And sometimes, like I said, it comes from a really deeply personal place. And, you know, for me, what's been interesting uh, when I look at, check in on whether I'm evolving as an artist or uh, as a human. Uh, uh, the, my last two records, and, and this one I particularly feel like uh, there are parts that, that really line up with my life in a way that, that they never totally had before. Like I'm, I'm starting to be able to step out front and say this is, this, this is me, this is what, what that is. And, and not all art has to be that and not everything I do has to be that. Um, but at the moment, I'm, I'm really liking... Uh, approaching it that way saying here's here's my relationship this is interesting to me and this is meaningful to me i'm going to write about it and sing about it and here's what's going on in in my life with my attitudes of of you know here's my fears and here's my concerns and here's how i'm addressing them and i feel like if i can do that in a in an interesting creative way that's helpful for me and uh and fun for me it feels meaningful and then hopefully uh, you know, hopefully that resonates with, with some, some pe- other people just listening. Right on. I'm all in. All right. How about this next song? Can you introduce this next one? It's called Times Like These. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a song I wrote just kind of out of frustration. It's partly, it, it's, it's one of those that, um, it, it's something I've, I feel pretty strongly, but I was also writing from uh, an outsider's perspective, uh, um, and, and it's about just uh, frustration and disillusion with with the current state of of the country in some ways. And and, and you know, I feel like uh, these are divisive times, and and some of our political leaders are the ones stirring up the divisiveness and pitting us against each other. And that re- that's really frustrating to me because I, I think the people that we elect to to run our country should should be more interested in uniting us and finding the commonality and the, the common ground that we have uh, to, to speak to our better angels and, and bring out the best of us. And right now I feel like a lot of people that are more focused on bringing out the worst in us uh, to sort of solidify um, their position. And so this is just a, this is, this is just a, somebody being pissed off about that. This is Hayes Carl. <laughs> Divide. I hope and I pray 
at the end of the day That I can somehow get my troubles to ease But I gotta say it's not looking good Not times like these Yeah, they're coming, they go The cold in the high I'm just trying to keep the world from turning me to something I'm not I'm gonna try to run until the whole thing's done And I just hope I don't end up on my knees But it's sure getting hard to stand up in times like these I just wanna do my labor, love my girl, help my neighbor While I'm keeping on my drive to be here But it's sure getting hard, brother, in times like these I could use just a little bit of help in times like these Times like these. Hayes Carl from the brand new record called What It Is on Dual Tone. Hayes, great to have you here. Thank you so much. Sure is nice having Corey on piano. Yeah, yeah. We borrowed uh, Corey Yance over here from Old Crow Medicine Show. Yeah. And uh, do, do you ever do you follow Corey on Instagram? He's, he's pretty hilarious. You know, I didn't until you, I just heard you talking about his Instagram and realized that he had one. He's, I don't anymore. Oh, ah. yeah, because it was too controversial. It was yeah, just crazy. I got, yeah. a little, I got a little nuts. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to introduce the band, Hayes? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there's Corey Yance, now uh, retired from Instagram, uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, playing the piano, and uh, uh, we'll get him on the man and the harmonica and the mandolin. And uh, let's see over here on uh, the electric guitar and the dobro from Chickasha, Oklahoma. This is Travis Linville. Uh, on the bass guitar from Austin, Texas, this is Gina Spigarelli. And on the drums, also from Austin, Texas, Mr. Mike Meadows. Great, awesome. So, hey, is there calling this your best album? Congrats. Oh, thank you. Yeah, how do you feel about it? I mean, did it feel good when you were recording it? Did, did it feel right? It felt great when I was recording it. It was a, it was an interesting situation in that I, I went, um, I, I did it in, in Nashville with, uh, uh, it was co-produced by Brad Jones and, and Allison. And Brad I had worked with on two of my previous records, uh, Trouble in Mind and K-Mag Yo-Yo. So I had a real comfort zone with him, and then uh, uh, obviously I've got a comfort zone with Allison, and 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 uh, you know just creatively, she's sort of the first person that that hears a lot of my stuff, and 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 was a co-writer on a lot of these songs, and and uh, understood my my vision for things, and was uh, really valuable in helping me articulate that in the studio, and and so I wanted to. Uh, 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 ask her to to help work on the record as well because she just had a wealth of ideas and and was was really involved from stem to stern on on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you've always been one of my my favorite songwriters because you're you're so clever and you know the dry sense of humor really helps me a lot. I, I love that about you. But how do you write a song? How do I write a song? Yeah, where does it start? Does it start with? lyrics and words or, or with melodies or how do you do it you know I, i've tried every approach i could come up with and and had varying degrees of success with all of them uh when i first started it was it was all lyrics and it was a notepad and i would i would um write something down and and, and a lot of a lot of times it came from not uh not setting out with an idea in mind like i'm gonna write a, a love song because uh, I found I was horrible at that, particularly early on, because everything I was doing was derivative and, and generic and, and embarrassing to me. Um, <clears throat> and so I was trying to channel my, you know, the, the Towns and the Dylan and the, these, these brilliant lyricists. And uh, so uh, for me, I think early on, I, I thought uh, uh, trying, to, trying to open up my mind in whatever way I could, um, uh, I just feel like there's this stuff out there in the ether, and and you know lightning can strike and you can grab it, and 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 uh, so I would rely on that. I would you know just find this great, or I, th I thought great line, or find something interesting to me and grab it, and then try and build a song around that. Say, okay, here's this line. What's the story? This is a description of a character. Where does it go from there? Um, but I've I, I, I found that that. Uh, um, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, and 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 uh, that's a terrible saying. Actually, now that I just thought about it, I don't want to visualize that. Let's take that. Let's take that back. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get something done, and and uh, <laughs> uh, so sometimes I'll write a, with a specific thing in mind. Like I've I've had 
um, you know, parts of my life that have happened that I really wanted to get out there. And I said, okay, I know, I know what, what I'm going for here. And it's not, um, that's a, just a different approach. But, and then finally, I, I'm, uh, uh, spend a lot of time just playing the guitar, finding a melody and, and mumbling and making stuff up and, and, and just kind of creating something on the spot. And then, and then I'll, uh, I'll record that on my phone or, or whatever I can and say, all right, that's got something to it. There's an energy there that I like. There's a, I can see, I can visualize a story or, or uh, uh, something, a theme happening that, that uh, I want to investigate further. And uh, uh, so sometimes it's, it's just playing music and that inspires all sorts of stuff. So I try not to get too locked into one thing and, and uh, uh, I'm still trying to learn to, uh, uh, about different ways to do it. But uh, yeah. yeah. Are you a country singer? Yeah, well, that's a good question. You know, because some people are they they're they're country singers, and they say I'm I'm a country singer, like Whitey Morgan, for example. Right. He's a country singer, and he does country. And then others, like you know, like Towns or Christopherson. I mean, they're country, but then they're really not, you know. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, I I, I wouldn't declare myself a country singer. No. Um, I also wouldn't declare myself a folk singer or, uh, you know, I think I'm some sort of hybrid. Uh, my influences were Christopherson and Towns and uh, a lot of Bob Dylan and John Prine. And I'm not sure any of those guys can be stuck in one category. Um, uh, I just liked great songwriters. I liked uh, people that, that could articulate my emotions uh, and, and help me better understand life and could... could go on that journey and bring something back and put it out there in a way that helped me see things differently yeah. and, and ease my words. You You set up this site where you put out a song a month that helped you have discipline and, and deadline to, to write songs, and those songs became the album. And in reading about that, you mentioned how, you know, Dylan's bootleg theories is an often an inspiration for you because we get to hear the process of yeah. the early versions of all the great Dylan songs, and so you referenced that and... Tell me more about that site and if people can go there now and hear the early versions of this album and also talk about talk about Dylan. Hmm. Yeah, the, the site was called Patreon and, 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 and it was set up to uh, sort of like uh, um, uh, for, for artists of any type. Uh, there's photographers and musicians and, and, and uh, journalists and painters and video makers and all sorts of stuff. And it was a way, a platform for them to get financial support from, from uh, people who enjoyed and appreciated the work to, to um, support that. And I had had a, a record, I hadn't had a record out in, it was five years in between my last two records, uh, my previous two, and, and that was just too long for me. And I had, I had uh, song ideas and, and and stuff that I would like to share, but uh, it didn't all fit on one record necessarily, or or have a, the same theme. And I still wanted to be able to get that out there. And so I start. I signed up with with uh, Patreon, and and just uh, uh, in an, an effort to uh, kind of spur my own creativity, give myself a bit of a deadline, and also have a home for some of these songs that maybe wouldn't be on a record, but. Uh, uh, but I still had a fan base that I knew was interested and would want to hear that and not have to wait so long for some of those songs. So I did that, and it took the pressure off in a way and, and allowed me to go in and sort of experiment creative, creatively uh, with stuff. So, you know, if I always, if I wanted to do a, a reggae version of something, I could do that, and maybe it wouldn't fit on a, on a, a worldwide release, or, or I wouldn't really feel as comfortable with that, but, but it just gave me a chance to loosen up and have fun and not take it so seriously while still learning and growing as an artist. and, and uh, So that was really valuable for me. And your favorite Dylan Bootleg series? Uh, volume One. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that was the first one for me. And, 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 and uh, yeah, it was just getting to watch. Uh, I mean, that covers a pretty broad range of, of music, but the the really early stuff, the the performances, uh, the, the Ode to Woody, um, the the wooden the, the 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 poem that he wrote, um, watching his his process and his art evolve and and constantly reshape itself. I mean, he, you pick any point in his career and you'll see that. But uh, from beginning to end, uh, uh, bootleg 
uh, series one, volume one was uh, yeah. was my favorite. That just had some magical, magical <clears throat> stuff on it. You know, it's amazing to me that tune, uh, Blind Willie McTell, which I think Mark Knopfler made with them, never made it on a record. Never made it on a record. Uh, and uh, uh, Mama, You've Been On My Mind. Yeah. It's one of my favorite songs ever written. And and yeah. I don't think he ever uh, put that on a record yeah. either. So that's that to me is always amazing. Like, you know, I... I well, work really the, yeah. hard just to finish a song, and he's got, he's got these extras. masterpieces that, yeah. he, that he's like, ah, this, yeah. I'm not, not going to worry about this one. Well, you seem pretty happy. Griff uh, attests to that. He says you're happy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm wondering what, what's changed in your approach, not that you were a bummer before, but what, how has your creative approach to life changed or, or improved? Well, I just, I'm trying to be present for it. And... Uh, I think, like I said, that for a long time I wasn't. And that makes a big difference because it doesn't matter how many good times you're having, if you're not fully there for them, uh, there's not a whole lot of meaning in that. And there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of good stuff deep in there. And whether that's um, uh, being with my son or, or being in love or making music or uh, learning something every day or just taking a breath, uh, you know, there's no guarantee for how long we have on this earth, and 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 there's no, there's no goal of, uh, there's no amount of of money or acclaim or or anything else that's gonna make us happy. And and, and I, I realized that it was time to sort of change my perspective there, and start trying to be present. And uh, so right here, I'm I'm here with right now. I'm here with you and and my band, and and uh, getting to make music and do something I love and. So I'm trying to enjoy that, and that that makes uh, a lot of difference. And I'll, I'll, I'll quote one other of my heroes uh, uh, here, uh, my friend Ray Wiley Hubbard. Uh, he always says, the days I can keep my gratitude higher than my expectations, those are good days. And uh, I found uh, that that philosophy helps me a lot. This is Hayes Carl. The new album's called What It Is. It's on dual tone. He's here in the roadhouse. How about one more song, Hayes? Sure. I'll do this one by myself. This is a... Uh... Oh, that will stay. I've seen you at the window. I've heard you at the door. I felt the world convince you. You could even up the score. Watched you carry all the memories from the life that came before Then went away, but I will stay I remember how you told me you felt it all might fall apart You barely made it into this world and you've been fighting from the start It's not easy to believe, but I will protect your heart in every way I will stay Warm rain on the water A lone star in the night and Brave dreams to hold on to It will be alright And it's hard to keep believing All the stories you've been told And to watch the way you chop it Is a sight to behold Sometimes you will get angry And sometimes you will get cold But that's okay I will stay garden and a lock on every door and all of them remind you of the ones who came before there's a pain in every memory you don't have to hold no more now the summer sun is fading and the autumn's in the hall and if time would just stop moving it wouldn't bother you at all but your story isn't finished You got so much more to say And I can't wait 
so I will stay. I will stay. Hayes Carl, the song I Will Stay from the brand new album called What It Is. Hayes, thank you very much. Thank you. I think we had an idea to do something kind of special right now. You want to do one more song? I would love to. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, uh, we'll bring the band around. Uh, I'll make them come, come to me. We'll bring them around here and we'll, uh, uh, we'll do the title track. Sounds good. Music style. Try to make my plans And then set out like a fool Towards the sea And every wave that crashes Rearranges all the sand And puts another path In front of me And what it was Is gone forever What it could be God only knows And what it is is right here in front of me and i'm not letting go what it is is right here in front of me and i'm not letting The title track from Hayes Carl's brand new record is called What It Is, and there it is. Hayes, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. This is Greg Vandy. This is KEXP. All right. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.